You know, I'm so stoked about today's talk because I believe there's a calming coming to your life through this talk today. Just like this intercoastal is real calm today, it's not always like that. Some days it's rather choppy out here. And I believe there's certain seasons in your life where you got a lot of chop. The wake is up. And I believe that some of you have been through that season and now there's a calming coming. That's what today's talk is going to do. It's going to bring a great calm and a peace. That's, that's what Faith Church is designed to do. This great calm, this placid look, it's going to be next for you. All right, let's get right into today's talk. God began to speak to me to talk to you about transitioning. This weekend, all weekend, we're going to talk about how to transition from where you were going through COVID-19 to where God's about to take you. Are you about ready to transition into a new season? God's word still says the same thing. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. His promise still stands. So he's getting ready to do what he said he's going to do in 2020. What are those things? All properties going back to its original owners. All debts being canceled. Come on, somebody. And God is getting ready to let all prisoners go free. I'm talking about people that have been in prison of lack, bondage, suicide, depression. You've just been hanging on to your own way of doing things and being right in your own way. God's going to release you into the new season. So today's not just a sermon this weekend. It is a word from God to you that I think is going to help you. What if I were to tell you uh, that my daughter is not the same girl that I first met? When I met her, she was, she was awesome. She never talked back. She, she didn't drive off. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't even know this girl. She just drives off in a car. and She feeds herself now. She's not the same girl. Let's go through the pictures. She was so little and cute and cuddly. Look at her. She was outside of the church. She's just adorable. Then all of a sudden, bam, she keeps changing, transitioning to this beautiful woman. Actually, in the words of Fleetwood Mac, I made her listen to the right music, though. Listen to her sing. The words of the song make a lot of sense. After I preach, I like to hear this. Come on, I'm getting older, too. We don't want to talk about it, but those words of that Fleetwood Mac song work perfect right there. She's getting older. She's not the little baby that I hold in my arms. She's not the young woman that was three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10. And now it's 16, right? Something's happening. It's transition. Transition is not a bad thing. It is a good thing. We're all transitioning through a space and a time and a place. And I believe that God wants to get you ready, though, and prepare you for this next season. But oftentimes there's a lot of anxiety attached to it all. In fact, I want to actually put up this meme right here that we made. I want you to check this out. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, are you? You're living in the future. If you're at peace, you're in the present. So if we're depressed about what should have happened, could have happened, and shouldn't I be married by now? Shouldn't I be further along by now? Let's transition past that thinking. If we're anxious about what's going to happen, I better make it happen, then we're going to be anxious about it. But if we're at peace, we know that God, the creator of heaven and earth, controls the whole world. He's got you. He's got this. Come on, somebody shout amen to that right now. Speaking of transition, let's go to Joshua. This is going to be our golden text this weekend. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. It says, after the death of Moses... The servant of the Lord, it came to pass that God spoke to Joshua. Let's just park there for a minute. That's a big transition. After the death of Moses? Yeah, sometimes we get to that point in life to where this leader that was leading the people of God, they've been through a lot of transition. They were promised a breakthrough. They were promised a banner year. Next thing you know, they're out in the wilderness wandering around. That was transition. They're used to the food and supply coming this way, and now it's dropping down from heaven. It was called manna. This was modern-day Chick-fil-A, right? It's manna, which means what is it? You might be thinking, what is 2020 holding up? What's this new season holding up? It's a confusing time. While they're going through all this transition, it came to pass. This situation, COVID-19, the situation that you're in right now, it came to pass. So embrace this transition. One of the failures, if we study out the life of Moses, and this is no ding on this guy, what a great man of God he was. But Moses had certain things that God spoke to him. And that's the cool thing about the Bible is God shows us the good parts and the bad parts, right? Aren't you glad the Bible's already written so he didn't write the, your story in there? So God is very, very uh, just transparent so you and I can learn. So this weekend we're learning about how to re-enter. So we study the life of Moses here for a minute. And God started speaking to Moses. Remember this? When he said, you strike the rock and water's going to come out. Water starts flooding out. Then the next time... 
He said, don't strike it anymore. Watch it transition into a new moment. He said, now speak to it. This was a lesson for you and I this weekend to realize no longer do we have to strike at the rock and try to force our way or to try to dream about something in the flesh. We can actually speak to it. We can say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and not doubt in our heart, but believe those things which we say shall come to pass. Not hitting it that we'll have whatsoever things we say. God was transitioning Moses into a new level, but his anger kept him back. Anger. Anger, uh, man, anger and pride really cause you to struggle in times of transition. I, I noticed this this last week. Uh, somebody, uh, I know, I was late for a meeting. It was my fault. I told the person that uh, some things came up and there was like four or five people and, and uh, they, th- th- we had to change the meeting. Then when I got to the meeting, a couple of the people that were supposed to be at the meeting couldn't be at the meeting. And the first thing I felt was, no, oh, they're not at the meeting. And immediately I knew I'm in touch with my emotions. Austin talked so much about that last week, right? Wasn't that good? I'm in touch with my emotions. I said, you know what's ha- happening right now? I just felt anger. Why do I feel anger? Because pride was hurt. Because these people that were supposed to be there, well, who do I think I am? That's how quick that we can transition into a negative mindset when really we're, I'm just lucky to be here. I'm just glad that I'm not working the job I really deserve to work at. You understand what I'm saying? So Moses couldn't understand the transition from anger, pride, arrogance, and it kept him back. He could see the promised land. I can see it clearly now the pride is gone. He could see the promised land, but he never got to go in the promised land. So many times in life, we don't transition properly and pride, P-R-I-D-E. Somebody ought to shout amen. Pride will keep you back. It'll make you make dumb decisions here in times of transition. I, I, our Sunset Hills campus, I can't wait to get back there next week. But uh, over the years, there's been people who have been a part of the ministry in your life as well, at your corporation. And they were there for a season and a reason. Somebody write that down. There's a season. Some people are seasonal. It doesn't mean they're bad when they leave. And then some people are there for a reason. Then some people are there for a lifetime. They're committed. Be, be committed. The faithful person shall abound in blessing. No dig on people who God transitions them into a new level, but a little bit of a lesson learned for people who their pride got hurt, so they left. I'm thinking right now that uh, of, of this particular person that they, uh, when we were getting ready to go into the new Sunset Hills campus, they didn't get to go. I thought for sure they were going to get to go. They were on staff. They were an important person in the ministry. And they didn't get to go. They couldn't make the transition. They wanted and longed for the good old days. And what they did is they switched trains in the middle of a tunnel. I want you to write this down. Don't change trains when you get in the middle of a tunnel. COVID-19, this is no time. At the end of 2019, your equilibrium is wrong. Your emotions and feelings are fickle. And you start making permanent decisions based on a temporary space and time. Can I get an amen in there? Because it's hooked to feelings. In fact, emotions, Austin talked about it last week, and, and sounds and sights, they, they trigger stuff. In fact, uh, Rabino hit me with some slow music, church music. Feel that? Just want to talk to you right now about what's going into your heart. Okay, hit me with some fast song, okay? It's about to be a banner here. About to be a breakthrough, right? Okay, that's good. That's some good stuff. We transition from slow. It was a feeling. It invoked an emotion. Then we transitioned into a hyper feeling and that invoked emotion your emotions go up and down based on what you see and what you hear so when this person and a lot of us all these fingers are pointing back to me you got to be careful in times of transition making decisions that are not in the plan of god for your life so now we're in a new building right and uh we bought the building for like 7.7 million and we spent like 10 million so 17 million dollars later the promised land looked really good and I was thinking about that person who used to drive past. They, they had to drive past the promised land. I thought they would be with us. It, they were supposed to be with us. But now they're driving past out of the will of God. And it didn't work out at all because that's what happens when we switch trains in the middle of a tunnel. When we start complaining about what we have, then we remain. Let's put that up there. If you complain, you remain. If you praise, you get a raise. Come on, somebody. Stop complaining right now. You used to complain about, I don't want to go to work. I hate my job. I'm just absolutely sick of this chicken that I'm eating at, you know, where Buffalo Wild Wings and and the mall is too crowded. Now you're like, man, I'd love to go get some chicken. I'd love to not have some social distancing, right? Because we always complain about what we don't have. Let's praise right now in this season of transition and see if God will take us to this next level. He didn't want Moses not to see the promised land and not to actually feel it, taste it, touch it. 
My question to you is, what decision are you making right now in this transitional time of COVID-19 that you need to chill on? I got a statement. You ought to write it down. If it's God today, it's God tomorrow. Shout it. Write it down on Facebook. If it's God today, it's God tomorrow. By the way, you need to be hitting share on Facebook this weekend because people need to hear this during a time of transition. Verse 1 again. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. Notice God starts speaking to other people. There's, There's new leaders coming on the scene. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go to the Jordan, you and this people to the land which I'm giving them. In 2019, it was one thing. In 2020, it's a new season. God is not wanting you to go back to the old season. He's taking you into a new season. He's unleashing a new destiny in your life. Can I I get into your Kool-Aid just for a minute and tell you that the thing that doesn't kill you is going to make you stronger? So yes, you were going through a season, but in reality, you were growing into the next season. Let's put that up. We grow into the next season. Most leaders get stuck. They get stuck at one level. The famous last words of a dying organization, a dying corporation is, we've always done it that way. We've always done it that way. Well, why do we always do it that way? Well, back in the day, we always sold eight tracks. How many of y'all haven't had an eight track in a while? Some of you don't even know. Just Google it. Cassette. Remember a cassette tape and the, the, the tape would come out and you have to stick a pin in there and do that. Kids don't even know anything about that today. We, we don't even know about CDs, right? CDs. Who carries a million CDs? Remember the big CD openers? You open it up and be like, Ronnie Millsap, Journey, Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Now you look and go, I'm not carrying all that with just one little touch into my phone. Thank God. I can get whatever I want right now on demand because seasons change. If you don't change and develop into this new season, you'll go through, listen to me, what they call the founder syndrome. I want you to write that down, the founder syndrome. So I'll just paint my picture so you understand. As the founder of Faith Church, you know, when Nicole and I first, my dad went on to be with the Lord, I'd been tutored by my dad forever, thought I would be ministering under him forever. By the way, I felt many times it was a season of change. I had words of prophecy from famous preachers going, God's going to do something good in your life. And it is time for you not to be limited underneath the shadow of your father. God is calling you into a new season. And my dad would be like, sit down, shut up, go mow the grass, plow the snow in the church parking lot, seal the parking lot, and leave worship. And I did that for 33 years. There was a lot of times that I felt like my season is over here. God has something more for me because oftentimes we're in the flesh. That same demonic feeling of pride that I said came into a meeting with me the other day. By the way, a lot of preachers aren't honest like this. That same feeling was the same feeling I had years ago thinking, your dad's trying to hold you back. He's not acknowledging your gifts. These people would acknowledge your gifts. No, 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 no. If you can't grow to this next level, then the foundation underneath you is not strong enough to support you in this big thing that God wants to do to you. I didn't know at 56, Moses, my servant, was dead. By the way, interesting fact, I preached this very text the Sunday night. He died on Saturday, and Sunday night I went to church and I preached Moses is dead. I was still in, in horrible pain because my hero, my dad, the one that I love is laying, his cold body is laying at St. Anthony's Hospital in South County and I just kept on going on. Why? Because dad said, there'll be a time, there'll be a season, there will be a time of transition and you're called for this and if I dropped you off in the middle of Mississippi with a Bible butt naked, you would start a church and you would do something great. But I almost messed up by going with the plan of man instead of the plan of God. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. I'm preaching better than your amen. At home, you ought to be taking a lap around the coffee table. You ought to slap the dog, kick the cat. How? Because you almost messed up your season going in the flesh. Because here's what Christianese people say. My season is done here. What if Paul would have said that? What if John would have said that? What if Esther would have said that? What if Job would have said that? God knows he hated that season. You don't enjoy every season. Ecclesiastes says there's a time to die. A time to live, a time to cry, a time to dance. All these are emotions. Austin preached it last week. All these emotions are godly when they are constrained. But when they're on the loose, you run from one business to the next business. One idea. Maybe I need a podcast. Maybe I need this program. Maybe I need to work for myself. Maybe I need to work at home. Maybe I need to work for other people. And you're running and you're chasing two rabbits. And if you chase two rabbits, you lose them both. 
Again, now fast forward years and years later, I remember Nicole and I were driving down the road and we had built what is arguably uh, the largest church in St. Louis. And I thought, had my dad not said, boy, it's not your season, then I would have been in a space and a place that my gift couldn't have really did what God called me to do. Because you know good and well, I couldn't say what I say under the tyranny of man. I couldn't say and do and lead the way I lead under the organization in which that was a great organization, but it wasn't where God called me. I had to do the hard time. I had to say, you know what, Moses, my servant is dead. Dad's dead, but thank God. God knew that at 56, dad would go. And, and there was some transition stuff that he needed to do that he didn't do that got him out of the will of God and allowed the serpent to bite him. But the Bible tells us if we stay in the will of God with long life, he'll satisfy us and show us his salvation. That only with our eyes would we see the reward of the wicked. But don't allow the enemy or the lust or the pride of life to make you take a transition that you shouldn't. Come on, that's some good preaching right there. Transition brings opposition and opportunity. Let's put that up. Transition brings what? It brings opposition and opportunity. It's going to be a little bit of both. Everybody's life, and I want you to hear me right now, is a little bit of heaven and a little bit of hell. It just is. In fact, when I read the Bible all the time, I, I, I identify with David. My name's David. I love it. David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah, when I read Saul and I'm honest, I go, man, okay. I don't want to tell you the percentage of Saul that's in me, but there's some of that in me. And I think there's some of that in you. There's a little bit of Saul and a little bit of David. There's a little bit of good and a little bit of bad, a little bit of God, a little bit of the devil. Why? Your flesh is always in opposition when God wants to transition you into this new season. And a lot of preachers will tell you, God's about to open up a new door of opportunity. God's about to drop every wall in your life. I want you to walk into this new season right now because this new opportunity is an area where God is about to bless you and blow your mind. Okay, I believe all that, okay? But I want to caution you to read the fine bottom print. The bottom print that I want to lay out for you today is this new season, it's going to have opposition. And this new season, you got to make sure it's God and not your flesh because it's always sexier, right? That neat thing. The grass is always greener on the other side because we don't even know if it's astroturf, it's real, or if they, is it in a septic field? We don't know why it's greener, but it's greener. It's greener to the flesh, but the faithful person shall abound in blessing. Joshua certainly wasn't trying to edge Moses out. Moses could have made the necessary transitions to not allow the founding syndrome to set him back it could have set him up to be a father i want to be a father to you today and i want you to listen to me right now in this season right now that you're going to i want you to be strong i want you to be courageous but understand we are all in a season of transition let's put it on the screen we are in a season of transition and in a season of transition you got to be careful that's why i told you earlier don't always be switching tra trains in the middle of the tunnel. Find something that God called you to. Stick with it. Be like the postage stamp. Take a licking and stick with it till it gets delivered. Just keep on doing the hard thing. Keep doing the right thing and understand that you have an opportunity to actually impress the audience of one. What's the audience of one? God. That's all you have to please. At the end of the day, God just gave you a command in verse 6. It says, be strong and of good courage. For this people shall divide an inheritance of the land I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Why did he say that? Because it's going to be difficult sometimes. That you may observe to do all the law of Moses which I commanded him. Don't turn to the right or the left that you will prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate it day in and day out that you may observe to do all that is written for you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. And I have not, I commanded you. Notice you are in there a lot. Four times in two verses. The Lord's going to bless you wherever you go if God told you to go there. Write this down. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. Come on, shout it. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. Everything we've ever done was a process of transitional thinking, which leads to positional thinking. In fact, let's put that up there. Transitional thinking leads to positional thinking. So transitional thinking is my dad passed away, right? Better way to say it than Moses is dead. David's dead. What do you do now? Transitional thinking. I put a vision board up because there was a desire in my heart. And the desire in my heart was to be the Joel Osteen of our city. Not so I could be famous, but so I could reach people. And it took about a year, but then the station called us. 
And when they called us, it, uh, it was a lot of money, but I said, I'll do it. So that transitional thinking led to positional thinking. So now God put me in this new position. So I had to start monitoring how I preached. I had to slow down my gait, work on my inflections, work on my hand gestures. In other words, I had to grow into this new position. The problem with some people is they're never growing into this new position. They're just dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. I dream of having my own business. I dream of having a Rolls Royce. I dream of having a bigger car. I dream of having a house in Tahiti. But they, those dreams are very selfish, it seems. Check your dreams and make sure that your dreams aren't really nightmares because somebody's got to pay for that Rolls Royce. Somebody's got to take care of that house in Tahiti. Maybe the thing you want is not the thing you want. Maybe it's a lust to impress other people with stuff that you can't afford. When in reality, you got to, again, say, God, what do you want me to do? For me, as we're kind of wrapping this up in the next couple of minutes, God wanted me to go on television and say this. Don't point the finger at you this way. We're pointing the finger at you this way. Come on, you've heard that a million times. God's not mad at you. He's mad about you. He wants to put a ring on your finger, a robe on your back. I promise you, if you come out to Faith Church this weekend, we're going to make you feel right at home. That's how the church got to be the biggest church in St. Louis, because we weren't judging people. I came from a system of judgment. God's going to get you for that. Don't run a church. God's going to get you for that. Don't run with girls who smoke or chew or think about it, right? God's going to get you for that. Don't cut your hair. God's going to get, if God was going to get us, guys, we'd already been gone. God's not looking to get us. God is looking to embrace us and give us his grace and his love like the prodigal son. That was a transitional time. So I had to transition from the way my dad did church to the way God called me to do church. You got to transition that business right now. Maybe even in your marriage. Maybe there's a lot of struggle going on because somebody's not, you're trying to control every situation. Just, <sighs> you're not God. And then realize that some things are scary. And these dreams that God has for you, they are scary. I want to put it up there. When I was dreaming about faith church, when God put it in my heart, it wasn't a pipe dream. God put it in there. And I wrote this down. If your dreams don't scare you, then they aren't big enough. If you can get on Facebook and do what you do the way you do and invoke a, a movement among people, and then after six months go, I only get three likes and four comments. Maybe I should buy likes. That's going to mess you up in the end. If it's if it's a big dream, it's going to scare you. And it's going to take your faith to do it. But here's what happens. When you know that it was God that put you in that position, like Nehemiah on the wall, you're like, no man can talk me off of this wall. When God puts you up there, it changes everything about you. It changes the fear of man and makes you realize, I'm not worried about what the government can do to me. The government of God rests upon his shoulder. My father will never leave me nor forsake me. Can I get a better amen right now? So as we're moving forward, we're almost done. I want you to stop thinking and being afraid of the possible things that could go wrong and realize if you're in the will of God, you will actually get right even when it feels wrong. So here as we're closing, don't in this transition be switching trains in the middle of a tunnel and then also don't try to make people your source. God's your source. Write this down, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all of my needs, emotional needs, financial needs, opportunity well if they would if they wouldn't and they sh they should and they could no 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 we trust in god and him alone he'll supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by christ jesus but what people do is they chase it i want you to write this down don't chase it you ought to screenshot this don't chase it don't beg for it don't stress about it don't don't be desperate for it just relax when you relax it will come to you you're trying to force it and make them change and make your kids obey and make them hear how great you are no 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 don't chase it don't become a beggar you're going to stress out you got to say god i trust in you and you alone and god i'm going to see the promised land and i'm not going to strike that rock because i'm prideful i'm not going to strike the rock because i'm angry i'm moving forward into a brand new season, a brand new position with brand new purpose and brand new power because I'm on divine assignment, not the assignment of man. Like Joseph transitioned from the pit to the palace, like, like you know, the, the prophet St. Paul was a persecutor and then a preacher. When, when you think about David being a murderer, but then a man after God's own heart, when we think about God himself is in heaven, Jesus is, he now transitions into earth. He now transitions into being a little boy, becomes a man, 
dies on the cross, goes to hell. A lot of transition. He ascended back. He's at the right hand of the Father and coming back again in the clouds. This is a transitional season that you're in. And know that your life is not common. You are not common. This dream that God put on the inside of you, it is going to come to pass. But if you're focused on what you don't have or the immediate gratification, sometimes God shuts doors. You know, this talk today was designed to make you feel comfortable, make you feel encouraged, and know that God has more for you. This loving God that we spoke about today really does love you. He's concerned about you. He cares that you're hurt. He's also not looking for perfect people. You know, Nicole and I weren't perfect. We were divorced and did stupid stuff and bad stuff. And for the most part, we were bad people. But God, with His love and His grace, actually used our tests as a testimony. And I know today that something in this talk really stirred you. Maybe it's been a long time since you've been to church. You know, I always say, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Are you hanging around the wrong people? Maybe you, you love the people that you're with, but they're not bringing out the best in you. It's self-sabotaging. It, it's somehow keeping you back. God's going to bring new people into your life, and 2020 is going to be your banner years. So I want to encourage you to come out and see us this weekend. Don't put it off. Not till next week. Then next week's next month. The next month is next year. Do it today. The only thing you're going to regret is that you didn't do it sooner. I'll see you this weekend at the Faith Church. Don't you let people talk you out of your dreams. We're the king's kids. We get to live in the overflow. We get to live above and not beneath the head and not the tail. I don't know how your parents raised you, but I would always hear, I believe you're sorry when you change. That's not what God says. God says, I forgive you so you can't change. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom from anxiety, from depression. What can I do to you tomorrow? So I'm speaking a word to you today to prevent you from ever getting in fear. What happens when we choose to look at people the way that God created them? Everybody worship. I took a moment. I kind of turned around. I was just able to see everybody together. All these women that feel so empowered by the love of Jesus to bring the feeling that we had today and take it with us. Not just allowing this to be in the room, but to carry that forward every day after. It's time to wake up to the love of God and bask in the light of His Son. His love forgives. His love heals. His love inspires. Today, love awakens. Did you know that Faith Church is in your hometown? Join our online campus and watch Pastors David and Nicole live every weekend. Faith Church can be with you wherever you go with our online campus. Download the app or visit us at faithchurch.com.